are these people? We're going to go to Indie Media Award uh, honoree uh, and uh, Jed Legume. And, I, you know, I, li I like Judd. And I think that as a three-man team, he's one of the best there is. I think he's <clears throat> way too old. What? <laughs> See, what is he like? What is he like? One of those kids in a trench coat? Well, actually, like a couple it's, of kids stacked it's actually, on top. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually one man and two ladies, because he's got Tessa mm, okay. and he's got Rebecca working with him. And as a three-person operation, they do tremendous work, tremendous, tremendous mm. work. But they are a little shit, Libby, and I'll, I'll admit that because we have to cover some of the spectrum and look at what's being said there. But he also is one of the best numbers guys, and follow the money and follow the numbers and what's going on. And let's break through the narrative. So this one broke me because I read this last week. Or, you know, he wrote this about a week and a half ago. And then at the convention, they talked about eliminating tax on tips. And then Nico House, our friend of the... Um, ooh, that was a frog. Our friend of the show, Nico House, put out a video Nico. earlier today about how that narrative is, is working. Even if it may be bad, it's going to work. We talked, uh, I know Angel and Miss Witchy Perfect last night on Pro Wrestling Talk even talked about it. And um, and yeah, so let's get into why this is a trick. Trump's tip trick, right? Just the tip. Well, not just the tip, but just the tip for the boss. As president, Donald gotcha. Trump's tax policy heavily favored corporations and the wealthy. I don't think anybody, you know, would doubt that. His signature tax legislation, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, overwhelmingly benefited those groups. But as a presidential candidate, Trump campaigns as a populist, just like he did in 2016. In 2024, Trump is touting a proposal to end, a, to end federal taxation on tips. He made the announcement last month in Nevada, a key battleground state with a large service industry that relies on tips. Hello, Las Vegas. Quote, for these hotel workers and pe people that get tips, you're going to be very happy because when I get to office, we're going to not we're going to not charge taxes on tips. He said we're going to do that right away. First thing in office, because, you know, that's true, because it's been a point of contention for years and years and years. And you do a great job of service because he couldn't have done that in the four years that he was already president. Now he's going to do it mm -hmm. this week. Yep. Trump's proposal to end taxes on tips was one of the 20 promises included in the official 2024 Republican Party platform. Large tax cuts for workers and no tax on tips. Narrative busting. This is what this guy is going to help us do here. But this is, <laughs> this is important because I'm telling you, everybody around you in your world is going to run around and think that this is actually going to be a good thing. And, this, and he's going to explain why not. And maybe we're wrong, and maybe he's wrong, but let's look at it. Trump's plan to end taxes on tips might help him politically with service industry workers. His campaign is urging people to write, vote for Trump for no tax on tips on their restaurant receipts. Okay? Like, Team like, those, like those dumb religious like dollar bills. That yes. you open up and it's like, yeah, come join our church. Like those terrible human beings. Okay. Like, Re good for them. Republicans in Congress have already introduced legislation to implement Trump's plan and end federal taxation of tips. Notably, the bill would only exempt tips from income taxes and not payroll taxes, which represents the majority of federal taxes owed by low-income workers. <laughs> okay, so it does nothing. Got it. But the proposal, yep. if it were ever implemented, could have a detrimental effect on most tipped workers. How? The primary beneficiaries would be people who own and operate hotels, restaurants, and other businesses that employ tipped workers. In other words, people like Trump. Uh huh. Remember that he owns hotels, folks. Or at least he did. I don't know if he still does. First... But he certainly owns Mar-a-Lago. Many people who rely on tips earn so little money that they already pay no federal income taxes. For example, half of all servers earn $32,000 or less. A server with a family who earns $32,000 does, does not owe any federal income tax and therefore would not benefit at all from Trump's proposal. 
The bigger issue is that the federal minimum wage for tipped workers is $2.13 an hour. I'm going to repeat that because it's literally been that since I'm in fucking high school. The bigger Mm -hmm. issue is that the federal minimum wage for tipped workers is $2.13 an hour. The tipped minimum wage has not increased since 1991, like I said, since I was in fucking high school. Combined with tips, these workers are supposed to earn a minimum of $7.25 an hour. That isn't close to a living wage in the United States since 2024 rent it's too damn high no the wage is too damn low it ain't about the rent it's about the fucking (laughs) wage why not why not both why Why not not? both why not both why not both (laughs) right as a result of course we know seven states that's alaska california minnesota montana nevada oregon and washington have eliminated the tipped minimum wage and require all employers to pay their employees the same minimum wage regardless of whether they receive tips. The Biden administration requires federal contractors to pay tipped workers the same as minimum wages as others, so it is covered in a lot of places. Major cities like New York and Chicago also have recently implemented similar policies, and employers hate it. Numerous other cities and states are considering following suits. The hotel and restaurant industry has been desperate to halt the momentum of state initiatives to raise the minimum wage. Why? The National Restaurant Administration or Association, which represents restaurant owners, has endorsed Trump's proposal. So, if Trump is on board and he owns hotels and restaurants, and the National Restaurant Association, which represents the owners, are on board, start to get worried. Yep. Eliminating taxation on tips could sap support from efforts both to eliminate the the tipped minimum wage and raise the minimum wage overall. How? While most service industry workers would receive little or no benefit from eliminating income taxes on tips, they would benefit from increasing their minimum wage to $15 an hour or higher, especially if they're only making $2.13 an hour now. Yep. The Tax Policy Center notes that this trade-off would be particularly brutal for back-of-the-house staff, such as dishwashers, who often receive only a small share of tips, enough to qualify as tipped workers, but not enough to live on or to pay taxes. Now, here's the other thing. That's why the Restaurant Workers United Union, that represents many of the industry's workers, opposes Trump's plan. Why? Because the call to end taxes on tips is just a mixed, misguided way trying to fix a problem of uplifting the lower class. And that's what a bartender and organizer in Austin said, all right, that Trump's proposal is not just the wrong solution, but a fake solution, which is pretty accurate, all right? Then a question of equity. There are some tipped employees, including the 10% of servers that earn 60000 or more, who would significantly benefit from ending the income taxes on tips. It's not going to, it isn't that it won't affect anybody. So again, 10% of servers, right? But why should those higher tipped, higher paid tipped workers get a special tax benefit while those making the same income in industries without tips are excluded? Why should a waiter who earns 60,000 a year pay less taxes than someone making the same amount in a warehouse or a grocery store. Well, because their wages are not necessarily set, would be my answer. Because a tipped wage, you still have to, it's not guaranteed for the hours that you work. You're not getting that money at all. I mean, there's there's clearly a difference. So he says there's no clear answer to these questions other than the proposal to end taxes on tips may have political benefits for Trump. I think that that is, again, a he's trying to back his way into, well, how is this going to benefit Trump? Because Trump doesn't do anything unless it benefits him. And that's the way that Judd sees everything, because he has a case of TDS for sure. Don't be rude. Hey, I got a call like I see it. Creating a tipping economy. (laughs) Ending federal taxation of tips could prompt more industries to shift from paying wages to soliciting tips. And that's the other thing that I'm worried about here is that in 
bring this up, they're going to try to push more people back into smaller wages plus a tip. In addition to potential tax benefits for employees, it would transfer some of the responsibility for paying workers from the business to its customers. And businesses certainly like that. For example, the Wall Street Journal notes that an auto body shop could restrain its prices and wages and strongly encourage tipping as a way to get untaxed income to workers and keep their hourly labor rate low. If there is a significant shift to tipping over wages, it would also increase the cost of the proposal. The Committee for Responsible Federal Budget estimates that incentivizing more tipping by ending federal taxation could cost the federal government up to half a $500 billion over 10 years. Um, that's not good. Why would we do that? All right. Then, of course, we have this sordid history of tipping. And I'm not going to, okay, that's short. We'll just finish off with that. According to the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, tipping in the U.S. is rooted in a racist system which was designed to keep African Americans in an economically and socially, uh, socially subordinate position following the end of slavery. I, I did not know that. Did you know that, Reef? No. Tipping was related to slavery? Prior to the Civil War, no. tipping was frowned upon. It was viewed by many as, a, as an aristocratic European practice that was incompatible with American democracy. But after the elimination of I'd love slavery... To get more, hmm? I'd love to get more... Yeah, is he going to give us more info on that? I guess. I after the elimination of slavery, many restaurants and rail operators embraced tipping because it allowed them to hire newly freed, freed slaves without having to pay them, they would be forced to work for tips alone. Oh. The, gotcha. pra the practice was designed to keep African Americans in an economically and socially subordinate position. That's what's being presented yeah. here. And agreed, because even today, 40% of people who work for tips are still people of color. Mm -hmm. Further... I don't know if tipping really makes them free because, you know, um, <laughs> I, I, that's being facetious, sir. Well, but here's worse. Studies show that customers <laughs> discriminate against African-American servers, consistently tipping them less than white servers, regardless of the Way quality more. of service. But wow. we solved racism, Indy. We solved it. Dude, honestly, I've Did never solve it. All right, I'm embarrassed to say I've never even thought about that because I've never treated any waitress or anyone who handled my food any differently than anyone else who ever handled my food. But wow, Did you man. see the Miss Butters thing on that? Oh man, no. The Miss Butters did like they they gave Carrie Carrie uh, Byron like larger breasts and like to see if she would get more tips. Guess what you think happened? Did she you get know? more tips? <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> quite a bit just the tip quite a bit more just the tip yep. the movement to end bit. the tip minimum wage to create a single fair wage for all workers is about recognizing the dignity and worth of all workers trump's proposal would push the united states in the opposite direction making millions of americans even more de dependent on wealthy patrons and that is really what judd's contention is and i'm not in total opposition to that, I'm pretty much in agreement with it. I think again, there's well, people, people in chat are mentioning that this only goes for like credit cards, like digital transactions, right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you tip in cash, it's different. But as we all know, they want to get rid of cash. So right. you know. Oh, mastermind. TIPP sure in the U.S.C. TIPP in the U.S.A. It's it doesn't fit. No, it's it. You're close. No, no. Sorry, man. Um, Mouse. My girlfriend was a waitress when we lived in Australia and made about two thirds of what I made as an engineer. Wow. And that and that was not tipped. Correct, Mouse, because I believe that they do not allow for tips in Australia. I believe that it's. That it's um it's illegal. But if there's a tax incentive for the owners, I'm skeptical 
but there's a win for the workers. See, so Sarah thinks that there is a win for the workers there, and that's why I want to look at it. Um, Possible. It is. B R O K in the USA. That's a good one. Um, for sure. And and there. Okay, cookies. Come on, man. All right. I will admit, I tip a little more if she has a bedonka donk, and she's sweet if it's a dude. Fifteen percent max. Oh, that is such a <laughs> that is such a single guy thing to say. I love you, bro. I do. I love you for it. Very much um, is. Right cool. jail, right away. Golden Monarch says, for the moment, Indian Reef tipping doesn't have to get reported for tax if tips are still cash, right? But the government wants your tips to go digital, and remember that a lot of the tips come on the credit card, and most restaurant bills today are paid on credit card. So I mean, you gotta you 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 gotta in people and tell them to make sure they tip their wages. I feel like that's I feel like that's important. Oh, oh, you know, oh, always tip your waitress and tip, tip your, your waitresses. and tip your stream hosts, by the way. We work on tips here. Speaking of eliminating the and tax drink, on tips. And drink responsibly. So if drink Trump responsibly, if Trump does eliminate the tax on tips, we can report all of these as tips because you guys are just giving us a tip for what we're doing. Right. So, yeah, um, you can do that by Cash App and Patreon, PayPal and Rumble. And, uh, of course, the Kofi QR code that's sitting up there by where Reef is sitting uh, over there, yep. over his over his dome and next to me. 